Welcome back. I am the coding teacher, and this is the bonus section of the Build Rock Paper Scissors uh, Code Academy exercise. Um, and I gotta say my tagline: I am the coding teacher, and I'm here to teach you how to code. Okay, so I don't know about that number two. I don't know what how rope would work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip that because I don't really want to try to figure out how rope would interact with rock and scissors and paper, but <clears throat> what we can do that number one is really easy so what if the user makes inappropriate choice how can we extend the function to handle that uh, well first of all let me fix something here I, re I realize that when you tie my method my function my program says the result is the result is a tie so I'm gonna get rid of this and just change this to tie okay and before that I'm gonna check for an inappropriate choice so I'm going to add an else right there because this is going to be an else if to the if that I'm going to write here. If uh, choice one is um, different from rock and choice one is different from paper and choice one is different from scissors lowercase then what am I gonna do yeah return loss return um, player loses because and then choice one is not a valid choice so if they put dog for example what this function is going to return is player loses because dog is not a valid choice and that's what's going to get printed in the alert right so that takes care of number one and like i said i don't really want to try to make up a game on my own so i'm going to skip to number three in this version if both players make the same choice the game returns a tie what if the game didn't end there but instead asked both players for new choices okay probably a thousand different ways of doing this the one that jumps out at me as the easiest is probably to turn this stuff into a function so I'm gonna grab this guy right here and turn it into a function check or er, get choices All right and then here I'm gonna close my function and I also this is probably not the most elegant way of doing it, but since we are beginners right now, it's it's okay. So I'm gonna declare these variables in the global scope. Var user choice and computer choice are gonna be declared in the global scope. And what's the purpose of that? So that when I call this function get choices, um you know, user choice is going to get set based on what the user inputs and the variable was declared in the global scope. So this guy, function compare, will be able to access user choice and uh, computer choice when I call it, from when I call it here. Okay, so <coughs> what are we going to do then? So that should take care of this. This should correctly do that. And what do I have? so the result is okay so i want to check instead of hard coding this in there or instead of putting the function call into the alert i'm going to declare a variable result and say that right and the result here and the other thing what i'm going to say is before i do this alert i'm going to check if result is and what was it that i put here tie which is what result is when there's tie. Then I'm just gonna call. I'm, I'm gonna say alert. There's been a tie, and then I'm gonna call get choices again. So I'm gonna go back up here and just get the choices back over. Um, get choices. And I probably have to call this guy again. 
So I'm going to put this guy in a function again. Function main. So this is going to be my main entry point for the program. Right? So what I do is I declare a variable result that compares them. If result is a tie, then I alert there's been a tie and I call get choices again. And then I call main again. Else, I'm going to alert the result is, and I show what the result is. And this right here, so main is calling it itself. And that's a little bit of an intro to a concept called recursion. So it's a pretty advanced concept, but this, this should work. And it's going to keep asking over and over. So if there's a, a, a tie multiple times, it's not going to stop. If I didn't do this, if I didn't call them this you know, block of code again, what would happen is, my dog is driving me crazy crying. So what would happen is that um, if there's one tie, if there's two ties back to back, it will settle for that second one and not you know, ask for the choices again. So I think this should be, f okay, so one more thing. Why didn't I just call get choices here? Uh, or here, rather. Well, because I'm returning tie, right? Um, and I guess, I guess in here I could have said alert, whatever, and then call get choices again. And then compare again. So, dude, shut up. But that's not what I wanted to do. I want it, I, I want to be consistent with my function's return values. So I don't, I don't want to you know, have a, a, a path of the function return values and some other path of the function not return values. That's not what I want to do. So let's try this guy out and see. Oh, okay. So it's not running it for me. Oh, yes, of course, because I never actually called main. So that's interesting. All right. So let me just call main right here in the end. Save and submit code, and that's incorrect. Main. Oh, in main first, I have to call get choices. So this is some serious logic mistakes, and you guys will have to excuse me because it's 11.22 p.m., and I'm tired. It's been a long day. There we go. So do you choose rock, paper, or scissors? So let's try rock. The result is paper wins. And okay, so let me try again. I'm gonna give it a couple of shots to see if I can get uh, paper wins, to see if I can get um, two ties in a row. That'd be marvelous if I could. So I'm gonna go paper. There's been a tie. Okay, paper again. Uh, there you go. So there was another tie, so that's why I printed that. But I realized that I have a little error because I didn't get notified that there was a tie. So where do I fix that? After the first tie, in here my main. If result equals tie, there just been a tie. I get choices main. Oh, so I don't have to call get choices here. There we go. Now, in here, since I'm just going to call main, and the first thing that main does is get choices, now that should work. So, let's see. Paper. Paper wins. What happened? Paper. Scissors wins. Let's try scissors now. There's been a tie. Okay, so it asked me again. Scissors. Rock wins. Okay, I mean, we got two in a row and it worked correctly. But let's see if we can get another two ties in a row. Rock. Rock wins. What the heck is this? Okay, yeah, right. I won. So, rock. Paper wins. Let's try paper now. Paper. Scissors wins. Oh. Paper.
paper. There's been a tie. Paper. There's been a tie. Okay. And it works correctly. Awesome. Paper. And, you know, that's one lesson to you guys. I spent, like, a good few minutes there testing it. And that's what you always should do. You never should be one of those terrible developers that just assumes that their logic is flawless. Because in all likelihood, that's not going to be the case. You know, this is a really simple exercise and I'm a rather experienced developer. And I still fumbled a couple of times there. Because, you know, you get overconfident, you think it's too easy of a problem. And then you make mistakes and it happens to everybody. It's nothing to be ashamed of. The only thing that's to be ashamed of, uh, uh, is that, that is to be ashamed of, is not testing your code because you're too arrogant and you think you're too cool for testing. Don't do it. Test your code. That is it for the Rock, Paper, Scissors with Code Academy. I hope that has been informative uh, and helpful, and I'll see you guys next time. Let me pan through my code one last time. Let me go right here. There we go. Then my function main. There you go, pause it if you need to copy it, and then finally, the function compare. There you go, and that's the end. And remember to call main. All right, that's it for tonight. See you guys.